Well, it's my great honor today to be amongst you and to share a story that's very uh, important to me. And it's also important to Northern peoples. My name is Louise Prophet LeBlanc and my uh, indigenous name is Ted Anna. And I'm from the Yukon Territory from the Nacho Nayak Dun First Nation. And Nacho means big river. So um, this is where I'm from. And are people dependent on the herds of caribou and also on the moose that lived in our region? So I wanna tell you this beautiful story that was shared with me by Auntie Mary Vitraqua, who lived in this Northern region up in the Blackstone region of the Yukon Territory where all the caribou the porcupine caribou herd live. So that's what this story is about. And she um, gifted me with his story in the early 90s. And I want to honor her with this story. She said years ago, there was a couple and this couple lived alone. Even though there was a winter camp and a summer camp, this couple, they always lived apart from the people. They didn't have children. And maybe this is the reason that they separated themselves. I don't know, she said. They prayed, they made offerings. They went and they saw a person who was a medicine man to help them to have children, but it never happened. Finally, as they grew older, they just accepted the fact that they would not have children. This was very hard for them. Now, one day, this woman was out running her snares. They used to set little snares on the land to catch small birds called ptarmigan. They're very delicious little birds. And she would set snares. And these snares were made out of eagle feathers. Each eagle feather can make two snares. And she had a whole bunch of them on her little belt that was around her parka. And she was going out to run her snares to see how many ptarmigans she caught that morning. And she thought she heard something. And she did. She heard a baby crying. She was kind of shocked. What's going on? Hmm. And she walked towards the crying. Auntie Mary said she couldn't believe it. Here there was a baby laying there beside a little small spruce tree. Of course, the spruce trees there grow very, very small. Take a long time to grow because of the short growing season. And here this baby was laying there and the umbilical cord was attached to this little spruce tree. She couldn't believe it. She thought she gave thanks right away. She gave thanks. She took out her little knife and she cut the umbilical cord and she put the baby into her parka and went home so full of joy. She couldn't believe that the creator had gifted her with a little boy. And when her husband came home, he couldn't believe it either. He was thrilled. He was so happy they had a baby boy. So of course, the woman couldn't feed the baby right away. So she made a little soup out of caribou. She took a little piece of the skin, she dipped it into the soup and that baby sucked on that caribou soup for a while. But she'd put the baby to her breast every day until she began to draw milk. And she was able to feed this little boy. Now, sometime that little boy got very cranky and the mother didn't know how to calm him. But intuitively, somehow she knew. And she went out of their little caribou hide tent, which was like dome shaped tent. She went out when there was a full moon and she would show the baby, she said, Tujri, Tujri. 
and the baby would stop crying. She thought to herself, he's a moon boy. He's from the moon. They're given to us from the moon people. This little boy. She told her husband about that. So they treated him very specially. They just took care of him. And the thing that they noticed about him right away was that he wasn't growing tall. He grew in his mind. He developed that way. He was strong, but he was very short. And because he was so short and built close to the ground, he got cold when he walked on the tundra. So his mother made him some little pants and she made these pants out of Martin. That's why they call him Thuksul. That means a Martin skin pants. So he had these little fur pants. And that's how he became known as Thuksul. So time passed. And oftentimes people have this imagination that indigenous people lived all the time in such comfort. But there are many periods in history where there was great suffering, starvation, perhaps a big fire burned through. Winter came very quickly. Maybe it was a short summer or perhaps a rainy fall. Everything was dependent on the environment and the weather. And this one year, the caribou took a different trail.